You might be wondering. What is biodiversity? Well, that's just one of the questions we're bent on answering in this video. National Forum of Biological Diversity on 1986, but it was changed as Biodiversity last 1985. Biodiversity has three types, the genetic diversity, the ecosystem diversity, and the species diversity. Species diversity is the type of diversity that actually group the different animals with their similarities and it was claimed that there is 5 to 50 million species, 1.75 are found, 16 are newly found species of mammals, and lastly 20,000 animals and plants are discovered at Philippines. Species diversity also defines the abundance or the amount of different species living in a specific place. Look at these carrots. Now look at these potatoes. They're colorful aren't they? This is what genetic diversity is. Let's learn more about it. Genetic diversity means and comes from the word gene. Genes is how the organism interacts with its environment in which both animals and plant cells have. Another way to explain genetic diversity is the variety of genetic material in the gene pool of a population. The gene pool is the collection or total number of genes in a population. Next is we have ecosystem diversity. This deals with the variety of ecosystems that exist here on Earth. This includes both the variation in terrestrial or land ecosystems and aquatic or water ecosystems. Ecosystem diversity means the different types of species habitat. Examples are forests, deserts, mountains, lakes, marine, ponds, and plains. Biodiversity is indeed a very interesting topic. There are several factors that contribute to biodiversity but we look at the one that impacts it the most. That would be evolution. You might think there's a big difference between us and other animals or plants. Well in fact there is. But there was a time in history where we were all just simply unicellular prokaryotic cells. As time passed something unexpected happened to these cells, they began to ingest other cells. But these cells weren't digested, instead they were integrated onto the cell and over millions of years, developed to be more advanced. This was evolution according to the endosymbiotic theory. Evolution is the change of characteristic of certain biological populations over many generations. Of course evolution doesn't happen overnight or over any short period of time. It happens over many successive generations over a very long period of time. You might be asking yourself why does evolution happen? Well it happens because of numerous different reasons including, environmental pressures which may push different organisms to create a better line of defense for themselves. This is the key mechanism of evolution natural selection as it's called. Changes in the phenotype or the physical or observable characteristic of an organism may help it survive in harsh conditions better. That's why evolution happens. The need to survive is what drives organisms to evolving better traits that may help them on the long run. Next let's jump over to macroevolution and microevolution. Macroevolution is the long term and or large scale changes. So large in fact that the species can no longer reproduce with other species. Microevolution on the other hand, are changes within the species population's gene pool over time which may result to variations in the population. As mentioned earlier, natural selection is the key mechanism to evolution. There are three things that must occur in order for natural selection to occur. 1. Genetic variability in a trait within the population. Two. The trait must be heritable or can be passed to other generations. 3. Differential reproduction must enable individuals with the trait to leave more offspring than others without the trait. A niche is the role of an organism's role in an ecosystem. A niche not only includes the environment an organism lives in, it also includes the job that organism occupies in that environment. 
This also includes what the organism eats and how it interacts with biotic or living things and also abiotic or non-living things in the environment. In relation to niches, there are some niches that are broad or narrow. This consists of generalist species and specialist species. Generalist species can thrive in a wide range of environmental conditions and can have a varied diet while specialist species can only thrive in narrow sets of environmental conditions and have a very narrow diet the worst being monophagy. Now then, let's talk about another one of the contributing factors to biodiversity. Speciation is the process in which new genetically distinct species evolve usually as a result of genetic isolation from the main population. One of the factors that contribute to speciation is reproductive isolation which is the inability of a species to mate or reproduce with other related organisms. This may be due to different mating sites, the inability of reproductive organs to fit and also due to the genetic barriers between the species. Finally. Here are some of the human activities that had an impact on evolution and natural selection. 1. Artificial selection which is the selection of traits that are genetically superior. This may be seen in hatcheries, in pets, and in agriculture. 2. Genetic engineering which is the modification of genetic traits in organisms either via gene splicing or some other means. All in all, biodiversity and evolution are both very different topics but they are related in one way or another. Still it is very important that these topics are handled well and delicately.